Have you ever wondered how you can build in joint intelligence into an assembly that you've brought in from like another CAD system or from a web page or from a vendor? Well, you can with the as built joint command. So let's take a look and see how it works. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the power behind the as built joint command. Typically, when you join parts together, we use the joint command, and that's where you have to specify, you know, for example, lining up one edge with another edge and then saying it's revolute or slider or rigid. And that's how you build the relationships between those components. But what if your assembly is already assembled together, like you imported it from another CAD tool or from uh, like a web page or McMaster car or something like that? but it doesn't have any intelligence. So we're gonna add in that intelligence using this as built joint command. So I'm gonna show you two examples. We'll start out with an easier one with this McMaster car component, and then I'll bring in a more complex assembly and really show you the power behind the as built joint. So I'm gonna insert a McMaster car um, toggle clamp. So I'm just gonna do a search for toggle clamps. And let's just do maybe like one of these hold down toggle clamps. And I'll just pick maybe like this first one in the list. I like to use the step format and I'll just bring this into Fusion. I like to rotate it so it's vertical, makes more sense to me visually. And now we have this component which is comprised of a whole bunch of bodies. So the first thing I want to do is right click on the bodies folder and say create components from bodies because to use joints, they have to be components. So I'm going to say create components and now we can see all of these are individual components which I can now move around. The next thing I want to do is figure out which part I don't want to move. I want to have stationary and that's going to be this guy here. And if I click on it, I can see that that's component two. So I'm going to right mouse click and pin that in place. And now you'll notice when I click on it, I can't move it around. So typically when you use the joint command, you have to come in here and say, for example, join like this edge here to this edge here, and then go into the motion type and change that to a revolute. And then it creates it as a revolute joint. Well, with the as built joint, that's what we're going to use because this is already assembled together. We don't need to pull it apart and then reassemble it. So I'm going to come in here and say as built joint. And you'll notice the menu is very simple. It's just asking for some components and then the motion type. So by default, it's usually set to rigid, but I know I'm going to be doing a lot of revolute joints. So I'm going to come in here and specify revolute. And then I just say, I want that component and that component to interact with each other. And then it's asking, select a snap point to place the joint origin. So it's basically asking, what am I going to revolve around? Well, this part is going to revolve around this pin. So I could pick any of these radial edges, or I could even pick like this radial face. I personally like to click the edge, so I'm going to click on this edge here. And you can see we get an instant preview of what that would look like. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And now when I grab this handle, you can see it's revolving around that pin. But we can also see another issue the the grip is not moving with it. So we're going to use another command in the assemble menu called rigid group. This is actually a very powerful command. I use this quite a bit. So I'm going to say rigid group and that allows me to group these two parts together. So I click those two components. I say OK. And now when I grab this handle, you'll notice that the grip moves with it. We're actually going to use that command quite a bit. Okay, let's continue on with our as built joints. We can still see it's revolute. So I'm going to just continue on. I'm going to click that component and that component and it revolves like around that pin there. I'll say, okay. And I'm going to right mouse click and drag straight up to use the marking menu uh, to repeat the last command. So if I'm just out here in space and I just right click and drag straight up, it's going to repeat my, my as built joint command. So I'll say that component, that component revolves around there. I'll say, okay, drag straight up. I'll say this component and this component revolve around here. I'll say, okay. And now when I grab this handle, we can visually see how all of these parts 
are interacting with each other very quickly where I was able to create these four joints in just a couple mouse clicks. Now we can see this over here isn't doing anything and you can almost think of this almost like a sub-assembly. So that's where I'm going to use the as built, I'm sorry, the rigid group again. And I'm going to say all of these components are kind of like grouped together, almost like a sub-assembly. I'll say OK, and now when I grab on any of them, they all move together as a group. Then I can use the as built joint command again. I'm going to change it to slider, and let's just say this component and this component slide along like this edge. And you'll notice it's giving me a quick preview of just one component, but when I say OK, we can see that they all move together because they're a rigid group. And if I grab this handle now, you can see how they move together like so. So that's using the as built joints command to quickly create the joints required to visually see how this assembly would work together. So here's another example, a uh, much more complicated example. This is a DVD packaging machine that I downloaded um, off of GrabCAD. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing where I rotate it so it's laying flat, like 90 degrees. That makes more sense to me. Um, and these are all individual components, you know, that can move around, etc. There's no intelligence whatsoever here. And I want to simulate how this packaging machine would work together. So what I recommend with something like this, where you have no intelligence built into the machine, is to kind of build it, build the uh, intelligence in kind of step by step. And what I mean by that is we're going to kind of start, you know, here with the motor, because this is kind of what drives this unit and we're just going to kind of work our way along through this unit. So we kind of know that this big beam here is kind of like the stationary thing. So I'm going to click on it. It highlights it as this part 24. So we're going to pin that in place. So that's the stationary part. Then if I grab this motor, I can see that it can move around. So let's just go ahead and do a rigid group of those two parts together. And now we can't move that around. And then I'm going to kind of start building the rigid groups next. Um, so for example, this tie rod thing here, you can kind of see it's all together, um, but they're all individual components. So let's group them together. So I'm going to say rigid group. I'm basically going to just click all of these components and group them into one kind of like solid unit like so. And so we can kind of see that's all one unit. And That'll just simplify things as we go along. I can also see, for example, like this is going to get bolted, you know, pinched down onto this. So I'll do the same thing. I'll say rigid group that guy to that guy and say, OK, and I can kind of walk around and maybe just build these rigid groups really quick. So I know that gets attached to um, that shaft there, you know, kind of gets pinched down. Um, and in fact, this is attached to that also and it looks like this is attached to that also so that's almost like one whole unit and that's going to end up revolving around right here so you're kind of just analyzing the assembly and figuring out how that's all going to work together now I can kind of start coming in and building in some of the as-built joints so I know that um, this shaft has to revolve in this motor so I'm going to change this to Revolute, and we'll just go ahead and say that guy and that guy. And I could pick any of these edges. It really doesn't matter. I just need to pick what it's going to revolve around. I'll say OK. And now we can see if I grab that motor shaft that this revolves around. And because this was rigidly grouped to that, that's why this piece is revolving around. But we can see that there's no mechanical connection here. So I need to do an as-built joint. And we'll say same thing here, say revolute that guy and that guy around that edge. And now when I start to revolve, we can see how that all works together. And if I were to grab this guy, we can kind of see some of the mechanics starting to happen here. So I need to connect this together. So you can kind of see what I was talking about earlier, where I'm kind of just walking my way along, building these relationships. So now if we 
rotate this guy, we can kind of see, okay, how that works together. So I need to make sure that this shaft revolves around that. But then now I can instantly see there's some clips and stuff in here. So I'm gonna do another quick rigid group. I'm gonna say this guy, this guy, this guy, that guy and that guy are all rigidly grouped. And then I can come in and do my as-built joint that the shaft revolves around, um, you know, maybe this edge like so. And now um, I can see, okay, I need to make sure that this guy is rigidly grouped. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let me undo and revert. Also do an as-built joint that this and, sorry, not as-built, rigid group. That guy and that guy are rigidly grouped. And now we can see, as I grab that, how this mechanical linkage is all working together. So believe it or not, we're actually almost done. So what we need to do now is work on this unit here. And this is basically all bolted together. So I'm going to do a rigid group. We can kind of see like this is bolted into this, this is bolted into this unit. So I'm just literally going to kind of click all of these parts and even these little suction mounts are, you know, screwed in or bolted in. So I'm just going to click all of these things like so. Um, and then this guy is attached to it also. And that looks pretty good. Um, I'll go ahead and do these clips like so. Say OK. And if I move this, I can kind of see how that moves as all one unit, which is good. And then I can do my as-built joint. So I'll say uh, Revolute. This guy revolves around, you know, this shaft. So I'll just pick, you know, an edge or something like that. And if this were to move, we can kind of see how that moves around. Well, now I need to build the intelligence up here. So let's go ahead. I can kind of see that there's some, some bushings in here. So once again, I'm just going to do a really quick rigid group of these bushings into that and then the same thing with like this guy here this looks like these are all rigid with that guy and then lastly we do our as-built joint i'll do a revolute for um you know e either of these doesn't really matter i'll say okay and then we need to do a slider so i'm going to say for example this component and this component I'll do a slider joint because this just slides up and down and I'll just pick, for example, something like so. And now if we were to grab this, we can visually see how that all works together. And if we were to come all the way back to the motor and crank this motor shaft around, we can see how, let me try and zoom out here so I can rotate this a little bit better. We can kind of see how this whole thing would work together. Oops. Looks like I need to add in, give me one second here, let me see what we're missing. Okay, I need to um, connect this guy to that guy, looks like. So let's do a rigid group of that guy and that guy together. Yeah, so that's what I was missing. I was missing that one rigid group. So now we can kind of see how as we rotate this around, how that slides and it picks up the DVDs from one conveyor belt and puts it onto a different conveyor belt or something like that. So again, you know, it took a, it took a few minutes to build the relationships, but think about how long it would have taken to do this joint by joint by joint using the regular joint command and assembling all of these parts together you know, and there's like little offsets here and there that you'd have to take into consideration. Whereas this was already assembled and we were able to use the as-built joint and leave the components exactly where they were and just say, hey, this is a revolute joint. This is a slider joint. These are rigid groups. And we can now simulate how this assembly works together. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed that video. If you did, Make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. If you need help learning Fusion, visit my webpage at cadedllc.com. And as always, have fun learning Fusion.